up on. So um, time to move on to our next presentation. And that will be coming from Liz Morgan. Liz is our head of onboarding and customer services. And she's going to run you through the process of what can happen when you join the Bromcom community, either as a, a local authority or, should we say, a commercial support unit. Over to you, yeah. Liz. Can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Great. Okay. I'll just share my screen. Okay, just let me know, Martin, when you can see the slides. Yeah, I can see the slides. You've gone full screen. I'll great. Pop off. Okay, great. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this uh, this event today. Um, so I'm Liz Morgan. I'm the head of um, what you would typically know as customer services. So this is most of the customer-facing services um, at Bromcom, and this includes the services that we offer to our support centers or support partners, as we call them. Um, so just to give a bit of context, and I'm conscious I didn't actually attend um, you know, all of this morning, so that this may have come up already, but um, it's very relevant to what I'll be talking about today. Um, just to give you a bit of context of how long we've been working with support centers. So um, we have partnerships going back literally decades um, in some cases. So we're really experienced at working with support centers. Um, we have some really large and established support centers who collectively support over 20% of our customer base. Um, and we sort of truly understand and believe that working with them really complements and supports our customers. So we know that there's MIS support centers out there who can do better than us at some things. Um, and there's areas that we, you know, we have more strength in as well. And we kind of work together to, to uh, work for the best of our customers. Um, so that experience is probably something that um, maybe you're not aware of already. Um, it's fair to say that a lot of those partnerships that are very long standing were quite informal. Um, so the second bullet just highlights some of the improvements we've been making to for our support centers um, over the kind of last couple of years. So in 2019, we launched a sort of formal training and accreditation program. Before that, we'd obviously trained and worked with support centers, but it was very much on an informal basis. And there was not a formal accreditation award, which you can see in the bottom right, um, that could be used to sort of promote Bromcom to schools. Um, there are, you know, in addition to kind of putting more resources on support centers, there's, there's actually new parts of the accreditation program as well. So we're just about to launch our finance accreditation scheme, which will be launching in July, which is in high demand as well. Um, and generally, there's just kind of improvements to the information that our support centers get and the context that you have with Bromcom that we've tried to implement to make things a bit smoother and a bit more standardized across all of our support centers. Um, the final bullet is, is relevant to some of the points I'll be talking about today. Um, we have, uh, you may not know, but Bromcom's kind of real strength is in our implementation because we have, a lot, amongst other things, obviously, but because we have a large trust customer base, we have managed some really large migration projects. We're talking kind of 50, 60 schools in, in, in a few weeks. Um, and because of that, we've obviously developed um, very mature data migration capabilities. And that's something that we want to work more with support partners on to help them make use of some of those capabilities, um, recognizing that actually our support centers are at the forefront of you know, moving schools across to Bromcom and may want a role, and some do, we know want a role in that implementation. So setting up a kind of systems implementation type role in that process, so we can help you do that. So that's the context. Um, in this slide, I'm just gonna talk a bit about the services that we do offer. So we sort of think of it in, in sort of three three planks, I suppose. Um, so on the left is the accreditation program. Um, so we have there, you know, in two to three months, an established support center can be trained to, um, to kind of support Bromcom. There are different permutations to this, and I'll actually skip to the next slide. Because we have a finance product as well, which I already talked about a bit, um, there's different sort of accreditation or training plans that you can go through. So starting with just primary MIS on the top, um, through to finance and MIS on the bottom. So what we do as part of scoping the accreditation is we come up with a tailored training plan. So if you want to support just primaries or you want to support just finance, you know, we'll come up with a plan that's for you. So what we've tried to kind of stand, standardize the accreditation, we also want it to be tailored to each center. Um, 
So yes, we put together a tailored training plan. A lot of that is self-paced. You know, we do base some of it on videos. However, we are more than happy and we often do to put on live training as well. It really does depend on the support center in question. Obviously, a lot of the time people don't have time to sort of attend live training, but there is a real mixture there in terms of the support you get to actually be trained in Bromcom and the sort of training methods that are there. Um, we've already talked a bit about Vision X and Pat. Vision X and Power BI reporting. That's very much part of our offer. Um, that any support center you know, can get Vision X. You can use the OData feed to develop Power BI reports. Um, so we do work with you to support that. I don't have a lot of detail in these slides about how the accreditation scheme actually works. I think a lot of you on this session, um, I know have gone through it and there's you know, more detail that we can provide. Generally, it's pretty standard. We have um, you know, the training plan I've already talked about and then some tests, a mixture of multiple choice and practical tests um, that we kind of expect two people at each support center to pass. Um, they're open book, we support you to pass them. Um, so, and you know, I don't, I'm not even sure if they're timed actually. So it's very much a case of trying to convert your existing MIS support skills to support Bromcom with our support. So it's not supposed to be sort of um, beyond anyone to do those tests. Um, but when you, you know, when you are accredited then you are able to use our logo and there's a number of other benefits that you get with that as well. Moving on away from the accreditation through to the middle uh, plank of our offer, which, as I said, may be slightly different to what you're used to with other MS providers. Um, because we do have um, tools and capabilities to bring customers on quickly, particularly from SIMS, we do like to work with support centers to give them a role in that process. So we kind of describe this here as a systems integration function or data migration services that you can provide working with Bromcom to your customers. So um, starting at the top there, just talking about how we can help you shape a program plan to bring schools across to Bromcom. But we recognize that you have a lot of experience probably in moving um, moving customers across to different MISs as well. So probably the main bit of interest to you is that second bullet, which talks about our in-house tool that we make available to support centers. So um, I will flip through to, this is a screenshot of it. Um, effectively, it is, you know, it's accessed by the web um, and we give you an ID and uh, we sort of register you to access it. And then you can run the pretty much 90% of the data migration using this portal. So Bromcom doesn't need to be involved um, in much of that process at all. You will work with the customers that you've identified moving to Bromcom to um, get the data. In many cases, I know that the MIS um, support center kind of hosts as well. So you may already have access to, to the backup. It's a simple backup process. There's buttons that you click all the way through and there's a, there's a video and training that we can provide on this. Um, and uh, yeah, you just go through, you follow the instructions and by the end, the, the provided there are no issues, which is very rare, um, the, the data has migrated and you will just work with your assigned project manager at Bromcom to finish the last bit of it. And then you have a live system with the data in. Um, so it really can take uh, less than an hour to migrate a SIMS primary system onto Bromcom. Uh, and we have developed this specifically for support centers because as I said, we realize that you will want a role in transitioning schools to Bromcom. We realize that you have skills and capabilities you might not have to help schools come across, particularly in terms of the project planning. Um, and we recognize just from a scalability point of view, we can't you know, get to the scale that we want on our own. We want help doing that. So I think that's quite an interesting part of the offer. Um, for our support centers there's some other bits i've noted there around you know having ongoing check-ins program management toolkits things like that um, but generally we have got some support centers doing this already and we would just have you know they would manage the process but we would generally have like a weekly check-in with them just to make sure that they're getting on okay um, and yeah that everybody's happy with how it works um, the final sort of plank of the offer on the right is about how you can input into our product enhancements and our software development cycle. So our support partners are a really important part of our sort of software um, software development cycle. We have developed, I know we develop finance very closely with one support center. So if you are happy and willing to work with us to help input to, to our developments and enhance our products. That's something we really welcome. As I said, we really do see MIS support centers as a really valuable source of knowledge um, and voice of the customer. So as I said, I've already mentioned finance, but again, I know there's been a lot of discussion of Vision X today, and that's been an area where through support centers who have been using it, we have already enhanced the product quite a bit. Um, there's some other uh, information that I won't go into too much detail on. I think the, the the sort of penultimate bullet is quite interesting to you, which is getting access to our development server. So any support center can get 
access to developments before they're released. And this is something that is taken advantage of quite a lot. Um, you know, you can, uh, you'll be looking at our roadmap and just trying to uh, see if there's something you're particularly interested in, trying to prepare your staff to support new things. Um, and yeah, you can get access to them as they're being developed. As you can imagine, uh, it's a bit funny when you log on each day and they're sort of changing, but that is something that we do offer and that I know a lot of sports centers do find very useful. Um, so I uh, didn't have too much more on the accreditation. The only final thing I was going to show you was just this kind of very complicated diagram, which um, I do show just to show you again, the process for transitioning a school to Bromcom and how little Bromcom is actually involved in it. So you can see the key at the bottom on the left, uh, red is Bromcom and blue would be the support center. So using our portal, um, all the blue steps would sort of fall to you uh, and you'd be working with the school on that. You'd be helping them check their data, making sure there's no issues, obviously in the background, making sure that they're actually ready to go live. Uh, and the red at the beginning is just us registering you for the portal and unless there's any issues which are which are very very rare now for a, a sims primary um then yeah we are uh, we we just involved at the end to get them live and that's pretty much the, the whole process and as i say you the sports center is working with the school to make sure that um, they're ready and you you book it all in and plan it all really without much input from broncom so that's a kind of really fantastic offer to our sports centers and I think that was the last bit I wanted to say. And I think we're going to have a discussion now. Thanks, Liz. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, no I'm going to check the chat. I don't think we've got any questions in the chat for Liz at the moment. Um, again, if you do want to put any questions in the chat that we can pick up later on, i um, more than happy to do that as well. Um, so yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Liz. That's great. No problem.